Hey, good afternoon everyone. Tractorman44 here. Well, I've been working on the old skid loader, and you know, you, I come to find out that there's very little information, very little accurate information available on this particular engine on the internet. I'm sure it's out there, I just can't find it. But this is a 332T series uh, industrial, uh, 192 cubic inch, three cylinder diesel. When it comes around to having your injection pump rebuilt, it's very important that you lock it in position that it's in whenever you remove it so that they can actually rebuild it and reassemble it in that exact position without you having done anything to rotate any components on your engine so that when you put it all back together everything's going to be in the correct timing. If you mess up like I did and actually get something out of rotation it's very difficult to figure out exactly what it is that you need to do to get the injection pump perfectly timed with the engine. Anybody can time the actual timing gears and everything of the engine. It's really simple. You've got uh, your timing marks on your crankshaft and on your idler, on your idler gear, on your cam uh, drive gear, and also on your, your distributor pump or injection pump drive gear. Okay, this particular one here had absolutely no marks on it but that's because it's actually set at the factory and it needs to be taken apart in the correct and proper procedure and then reinstalled in the correct and proper procedure with nothing moving in the meantime for it to be correct. If you mess up like I've got, like I've done, that's where it becomes an issue. Well, I think I've got it figured out and this is what I'm going to do. Whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. The injection pump, when it comes back from the rebuilder, it's actually timed for the initiation or the beginning of the injection cycle for cylinder number one. This is a three-cylinder diesel and cylinder number one is in the back of the machine which is the front of the engine because the engine's installed backwards on most of these uh, skid loaders. And I've got the timing cover off and I've got everything assembled in the proper location with the timing marks. However, we're down now to determining what is perfect top dead center of number one. You have to determine what the point before top dead center the beginning of the injection cycle is in degrees and you have to rotate that engine backwards past that point and then roll it back forward to that particular degree so that you take the backlash and stuff out of the gears. Then and only then can you install the properly timed injection pump. This particular one needs to be 28 degrees before top dead center at the initiation of the injection. So what I've done, I've got all the timing gears lined up and I've got number one at top dead center. The, the valves are able to, to move so that tells you on your compression stroke both valves are closed, the springs have no tension on top of the uh, the rocker of the uh, the tops of the valves. However, you got to stop and think. As your crankshaft is rotating around, the circular motion of the crankshaft is converting the circular motion to an up and down or vertical motion with the piston. So there's a particular point when you get it top dead center where it hovers there for just a second. There's a little bit of an angle before, right at, and a little bit after the top of that cylinder that and I don't know what that degree is going to be, I haven't measured yet, but there's going to be just a few degrees there that it's going to dwell at the top of that particular uh, stroke. So what we need to do is we need to measure from where it's located all the way down to where the dial indicator stops moving, record that distance, rotate it the other direction until the dial indicator stops moving, and record that distance. The perfect top dead center of that crankshaft is going to be 50% of that total measurement before and after on that particular dwell angle or that particular time that it's dwelling on the top before it starts pulling back down. Well, what I've done is I've taken a piece of tool steel and it's just a few thousand smaller than the diameter of the insertion point of the actual injector. So I've got that setting down in through the injector opening. I've got it resting on top of the piston and I've got my dial indicator zeroed and I've got it setting right on top and all my marks are in alignment. If you think about it, you know, the injection time is very, very critical and just a little bit of backlash in the gearing will actually be a, a degree off of the timing cycle and all that has to do with how well that engine is going to run. So there you can see my dial indicator setting at zero and you see the shiny, shiny tool steel that's actually inserted right down through the injector opening and is resting on the top of the piston on cylinder number one. I can't get it any closer, but what we're going to do is we're going to watch for two things. Look at the point of the dial indicator where it's making contact with my push rod coming up off of the piston and take a look at that indicator right there pointing directly at zero. The camera's not in line so you can't actually tell, but it's directly on zero. So we're going to watch for movement of the needle 
and separation of this right here, and then we're going to determine that the piston is perfectly where it needs to be. You see the separation and the needle moved just a little under zero. Just come right back up again, go the other direction. We have two thousandths of an inch movement as it's passing over the dead center. So what I have to do is just zero it dead in between those two thousandths and this crankshaft will be perfectly straight up and down and that piston will be perfectly at top dead center. Then we can go about the business of setting the injection pump in. Another thing comes into the picture at this particular point. Now this is called a degree wheel. Now you got to stop and think what happens inside that motor. You just can't throw fuel in there uh, at any particular time and, and expect it to, uh, to ignite or combust and produce power. That's why they determined that you have to dump that fuel in in this particular engine at 28 degrees before top dead center. You have to give it time for that injector to shoot that fuel into there because this is happening really, really fast. Diesel fuel fires because of heat of compression. So you have to build that compression on that specific charge of fuel in order for it to combust and it has to combust at specifically the right time. And believe it or not, uh, this happens so rapidly, but you don't really think about this, but it, uh, it's a measurable time that it takes for that entire fuel charge to combust inside that cylinder, even though this is happening at many, many uh, hundreds of RPMs, you know, 2,000 RPMs or whatever, you know. It still takes time for that to ignite and burn all the way across to fully engulf the top of that piston to force that piston down with all the force of that particular charge. That's why the it's so critical to have the timing correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this degree wheel right here. This is a degree wheel with 360 degrees on it and you can see it's got top dead center and bottom dead center marked here. And we're going to put this right on the crankshaft and now that we know we're perfectly in top dead center I'm going to put me a, an indicator over the block somewhere and I'm going to indicate it right at the the zero or 360 degree mark. This happens to be a Lucas CAV uh, distributor pump. So this is going to go on the crankshaft right here we're going to put the bolt on that goes through your, your harmonic balance or whatever. And then we're going to have to build an indicator to go right there to zero mark. Again, this is Cliff Notes, non-professional version of what's got to happen. I know there's a lot, of, a lot of guys out there that work on engines a lot more than me. And they're saying, why don't you just look for the marks on the flywheel? Well, this isn't a farm tractor, it's a skid loader. So the flywheel is pretty much not accessible. There are two inspection plates. I took the inspection plates off. All you can see underneath one inspection plate is the big housing on the back end of the motor that's over the top of the flywheel that actually drives the two hydraulic pumps for the two sides of the, the skid loader and the hydraulics, you know, for the, the operation of all the, the loader and, and all that stuff. The other inspection plate, all it does is open up a little compartment that shows you the tail end of the, uh, the cam, rear cam bearing. So there's absolutely no place on this to easily see the flywheel marks to set the timing. So that's why I'm going through the trouble of putting a, the degree wheel on the crankshaft because I've got no timing marks that are accessible without another day's worth of work. And if you guys have ever gotten into the hydraulic drive pumps on the back of this motor, this engine, like, like I've had to do, it's, it's a difficult, difficult job. You have your injection pump mounted, locked in the uh, beginning of the injection cycle for number one cylinder. You've just got the drive gear loose on the tapered shaft. There's no keyway to lock this on there. It's nothing more than a taper lock. So leave that loose so that you won't miss your timing mark. You can see my homemade indicator right here, right off of this bolt right here, off the water pump, right down here on zero or 360 degrees. So before top dead center, we will rotate counterclockwise to 28 degrees but we're going to go about 32 or 34 degrees and then bring it back to 28 degrees to remove the backlight from all the gearing. Then we're going to put this into position and hold the backlash tight as we lock this down to the spe specified torque. So we're going to go ahead and rotate this beyond that 28 degree point. See all the gears turning. There's roughly 35 degrees, or exactly 35 degrees. But remember now, we've got the, the gear loose here because we, we have the shaft on the injector pump locked in position for the beginning of the injection cycle on cylinder number one. So we're actually allowing this to maintain the, 
the marked position on the idler gear, but it's just rolling on this shaft. So we're going to roll this back to 28 degrees and then we'll be able to lock the shaft to the injector pump, then release the lock on the injector pump. So let's go back to 28 degrees. There's exactly 28 degrees before top dead center. Okay, and you can see our timing marks are just a little bit off because we're no longer at top dead center. We're before top dead center. I'll lock this guy down and we should be good to go. You can actually see I can move the gear this way and that way. So we need to move this gear and hold it counterclockwise, put pressure on it counterclockwise in order to take the backlash out of the gear and set your torque wrench to nine Newton meters and tighten it down with that pressure on it at nine Newton meters so that you don't damage the pin or the lock that's actually locking the pump shaft in place. Once you get it to nine Newton meters, then you unlock the pump shaft and then go ahead and torque it to the, uh, to the second torque spec. There you go. Nine Newton meters is not very much, but that's enough to not damage that little pin that's actually locking the pump into position. But now that it's secure, we'll loosen that 3 8 headed locking pin and then we'll come back set us to the uh, the, the follow-up setting and torque this down for good and just for your particular information nine newton meters is like 6.7 foot pounds and then the final torque on this is going to be 81 newton meters and 81 newton meters is 60 foot pounds If you have trouble sometimes slipping a cover over a large seal, um, you know, because the seal may be, uh, even though you apply grease to it, it wants to turn the seal inside out as you're passing over the top of, of a, a shaft or whatever. What you can do is you can take a, a soda can or a beer can and wrap that beer can around that shaft and taper it to where it'll pass through your seal opening and then slide it right over the top, then pull your beer can out and that maintains integrity of the seal. You won't do any damage to it that way. Everything's going together pretty nicely. Well, timing curve is on. Everything is uh, pretty much buttoned up as far as the actual engine is concerned. A series of eight bolts and two hydraulic lines. We'll be right back. So now it's time to uh, set the radiator in. This radiator is kind of tricky to install because they're made to actually pull back a little bit. You got these levers on the side and there's a little bit of play in the hoses that allow you to pull this backwards so that you can clean that oil cooler and the other side of the radiator. I've got the injector lines loose so we're going to have to bleed it this time for sure. And we're going to have to go ahead and turn it on and let the transfer pump go ahead and pump the entire system pull it full of fuel all the way up to through the filter and into the uh, injector pump itself. This back end is pretty heavy. It's best done with two guys. Okay, we got the transfer pump turned on. We'll go ahead and we're uh, we're filling the oil filter. Then we'll go ahead and start bleeding the injectors. Yeah, this transfer pump just runs continuously. Yeah, that. We'll dump the excess back down the return line. Okay, go ahead and let's uh, spin it over. There's one, number two is, is purged. I think number one's starting to purge, so go ahead a little bit more. Okay, hold it. Number one is bled. And number three just starting, so turn again. Okay, hold it. Go ahead and see if it'll fire now. That's a good sign.
Well, the good sign is there's uh, there's no white smoke and there's no black smoke in the exhaust. It's actually ramping up adequately. Uh, he's going to go back in the woods. He's going to lift something, move around everything, and see what it's going to, how it's going to be running when he's uh, at wide open throttle and actually moving a load. Well, guys, hopefully this is going to be the end of this one here. My son went out there with this thing and picked up one of the largest loads we have out there. Went ahead and picked it up, fiddled around with it and flipped it around, and it did okay. I think we're going to call this one good, and we're going to go ahead and uh, put this thing back to work. And you know what? This is Trackman 44, and I'm out of here, guys.